Well, we're visiting two historic sites. We're going to be going over to the Sheridan Railway Museum, but right now we're at Crowe College. This was its original location, and it was the first Western-style college in all of Sub-Saharan Africa. Don't go anywhere. There's much more in store. So I'm walking through the halls of the original Pro Bay College building and I'm thinking of two of its most famous students, Christian Cole, who was the lawyer, the first black lawyer to ever argue a case in a British court. I'm also thinking of Samuel Ajay Crowther, who is going to become the first bishop of the Anglican Church of Nigeria. So much history in these walls. College here in Kleintown. Next up is the National Railway Museum. Don't go anywhere, it's the Vicky Ramo Show, and we will be right back. Hallelujah to me, three of my middle robot.
the Vicky Ramo Show, and today we're at the Sierra Leone National Railway Museum in the east end of Freetown, and I'm talking to Mr. Abdul Karim Kamara, who is the Education Outreach Officer here at the museum, and he's going to tell us a little bit about the history of this wonderful, wonderful building. Tell me about Sierra Leone's um, railway history. When we had railways in Sierra Leone, how did that operate? How long was the rail and where did it go? Um, during the colonial era, uh, we used to have a steam locomotive engine. It's, what I mean is that we were using things here that we are using charcoal and water. Okay. Okay. So, but um, during the period, the government at that time thought it fit to see how best we can close down the railway because, according to their opinion at that time, they thought it was not economical. Okay. Um, and by economical, you mean profitable? Yes, not profitable. Okay. okay. Um, because of that, they started thinking of the ideology of closing it down. Mm -hmm. And it started from that time since 1967, mm -hmm. during the tenure of Sir Jackson Smith, okay. um, who actually holds the alone for about one year. Mm -hmm. And that idea started booming up until when Dr. Shaka P. Stevens, um, in blessed memory, came and he actually enforced it because he believed, he actually believed it should be phased out because it is not making money for the government. I see. So, um, so but other political people, other people, other like-minded people thought it is not because of that because the mass majority at that time thought it was good for the people because it, it is easy for people to just go, like farmers, to just go to the bush have their goods, put it on their on their on their basket, on board the train, come from Pendembu or wheresoever from Bo, right to Freetown, do their business and go back at the same time. So it's easy. It is um, as you know, there's no no traffic mm -hmm. and the roads we are not bad like now. You will see bad roads, muddy roads, and all the rest of it. So the people we are happy at that time. Mm -hmm. So but when government started thinking of closing it, so the people we are. Uh, why? Why? So they started thinking it's because of political reason, because other people are saying because it is coming right from Pendembwe and it was the southeast, mm -hmm. and people are thinking that the APC government at that time mm -hmm. was uh, um, northerners, and because of political reason, just to see how they can be able to muscle um, I see. the other parts of it. That okay. is how other people are thinking. But what we know, the bottom line is it's because it is not making money for government. Okay. Um, you just said that people were coming from Pendembu. Tell me all the other places that the rail connected to. Yeah, it started from here, mm -hmm. Freetown here, and here is the main engineering, engineering department here. Mm -hmm. It moves like if I should start at the western area here, you go to Water Street, where we have the bus station now. It moves from there to Kotinski, where we have the Sierra National Railway Museum now. And the, the train that was moving from um, National Museum now, mm -hmm. which is a country station. It is the train that are going up to Hill Station, okay. where we used to have uh, the people that are coming from Europe. Okay. They, they want the, the colder weather, um, so they, they like living in in, in, in in hilly places. We are the place is very cold, mm -hmm. so we have a special train that was moving from from Kotinski up the hills, okay. and from there you have the, um, another train that is moving. They are at Water Street, mm -hmm. where we now have Wallis Johnson Street, where mm -hmm. the bus station is. It's moved direct to Wellington, to Waterloo, and you, you can be able to see the remains. If you go now to Waterloo, you will find out that the, the, the police station there mm -hmm. was a train station, and okay. we used to have the sign there, Waterloo sign. It is actually the sign of the railway. Okay. So um, moving from here, from Freetown here, you move from here to Makeni, Makeni to Mabuaka, Mabuaka, you have to go to um, Bau here. Okay. And you can go to Bavia now, you find out that the building there that is housing one of the, the, the medical it's a medical clinic there mm -hmm. was the train station. Okay. And it is from that point you can be able to move even to Makeni and to go direct to, to, to Pendembo. Okay. Uh, it is the only source of transportation at that time okay. until when it phased out in 1970, 1974 and it, we started seeing um, the, the image of the double decker buses okay those double decker buses until we started looking at it that it's just dangerous and all the rest of it then we have all the other modernized vehicle now that is taking people from one place to another but if you like i'm saying if you just source 
the idea or the views of people now, you find out that the people actually need the source of transportation again because it is easy. It can onboard 500 people in one go. Right, it is right. very difficult for you now to say people that on board 500 people. That's true. So, so. That's true. Um, were you were you ever fortunate to ride the rails? No, I, I've never fortunate to ride the rails in Sierra. Okay, so it but, had the rails had phased out by the time you yeah, were Yeah, exactly. Old but okay. what I am fortunate to ride in other countries. Okay, okay, I understand. Others. Okay, I get you. Um, tell me a little bit about what an average day was like let's say for in the life of the train like what was what was an average day in the life of a train or a train conductor um what did they do how did they get about i mean how did it work first and foremost what i want you to know is working at the train station at that time was like somebody working at the airport somebody working at the Africa I mean, it's it's an enviable job okay everybody wants to work everybody wants to be part and parcel because it is one of the most livelihood job at that time right and of course you will see even the female they work um during that period as 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 people that are giving signals mm -hmm. they have those signal flags mm -hmm. so lots of female they are working okay you see the elderly people and you see even foreign nationals, especially mm -hmm. people coming from the UK, mm -hmm. because all of this locomotive, these carriages that you are seeing, are a match from the UK. Okay. Okay. In Leeds, to be specific, in York, mm -hmm. and all the rest of it. So, working at that time in the rails was enviable. Everybody, everybody wants to be part and parcel. So, if you work at the rails at that time, you will be enviable. And of course, if you are a humanizer, you have all the girls around you. <laughs> At that time, I'm all against <laughs> Okay. Um, how did the museum, as we know it now, how did how did the museum come to be and how did it start? Fantastic. Um, actually, like I told you, this was the main engineering department of all the years. It means um, if it again happens to break down, they have to bring it down here. Okay. And it is here the engineers will able to will, are able to fix it up. Mm -hmm. Um. Not until when uh, they decided in 1975 to close down the railway, the last general manager at that time was Mr. Norma. Okay. Um, because um, the British people at that time wanted to take all of these things back to England. Mm -hmm. um, fortunately, there was an engine that is known as number 85, which they took, and it is there up till now. And they are using it as an exhibition okay. uh, locomotive. During when we have, like for now, we are going to very close to our independence. Okay. They will able to they take it out, they do some exhibition, they raise money, and that money they are able, they, the, the friends of the railway museum, they are there, about 20 to 30 of them, okay. they are the race fund to be able to help us there. Okay. So okay. Um, it is Mr. Norman who actually um, look at some of the remains, the remains of the rail, like we are seeing them now. Mm -hmm. He locked up this place okay. because he was about to go to England. Okay. He locked up the place. He was having this idea that it, there will come a time that these things will be very much useful to see. Okay, okay. So a lot of the place about there was um, one Mr. Mohamed Mohamed Bangora, mm -hmm. who was uh, his deputy, who was uh, the en main engineer here. Okay. He, he was given the keys, and he was given strict instruction not to allow people to to intrude into these premises. Okay. And not until when we have the rebel war mm -hmm. and people we are moving, we have this place moving from oh, the provinces. Okay. Okay. And this place was all over about five thousand housing about five thousand displaced people. Wow. The whole of clients out. And this place was here and you know uh, that this place happens of to course, of course. to enter into this place. And you will be able to look at the picture, you find out that most of these carriages, this locomotive, this um, rolling stock we are stripped off. Some of them some of the items we are taken as cap metal for them to be able to survive. Right. So not until when uh, the peacekeeping force and we have the people from IMAT who came to this country to see how best they can be able to help our military guys. Mm -hmm. So um, there was a guy, a British guy, who is a uh, who is a, a railway enthusiast okay. by the name of uh, Colonel Steve Davis. Okay. He was actually the, the, the presidential advisor in military affairs to the then president, Dr. Ch Ahmad Chijan Kaba. Okay. So, but he was also with the, the IMAX. So, and I, uh, as I have told you, he is a, 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 a railway enthusiast. So, he, he talked about, he had learned many things about the Sierra Leone Railway. Mm -hmm. So, he talked about it, and when he gets to Sierra Leone, he started doing some research. And he found out that there are still remains of the railway at Klein Town. 
So he started doing his research and he happens to come down to client's house. And by direction, he came over, over this bay lake. I was able to climb and watch through the window and find out that these items are still here. So right. it was just like that, very happy and it was very enthusiastic to see how best who can I contact. Okay. And he happens to get into the live hands of the president okay. and told him about his idea that these things are here, I want to fix it up. I have an idea of fixing up the museum and all the rest of this. Mm -hmm. And he was given the green light. The president came down here and he was able to see and gave him the green light to go ahead. Okay. So he used his own personal money and asked um, the IMAX people at that time to help them with the labor force and all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. And he was able to get in contact with some of my guys here who are known as the restoration team. Okay. They were here. You can see the photos, how these items look like at that time. Mm -hmm. So they were able to resuscitate these items mm -hmm. to see how best they can look good. Right. Although there are lots of challenges and mm -hmm. we have to be able to restore them again the way it is because all of these things you can see the drawings. We have the original drawings of them so you can be able right, no longer no sooner we have good sponsorship, we can be able to fix them the actual way it looked like during the colonial period. So it was in in March 2004, 2005 that we have the official opening of the museum here. Okay. Um, like I said, Mr. Kone Davis used his own personal money. And not until when he wanted to leave, he actually handed this thing over to the government of Sierra Leone. And now, as I'm telling you, it is an assisted institution of the of the British Railway. Okay. But it is owned by the government of Sierra Leone under the Ministry of Tourism and Cultural Affairs, okay. supervised by the Monuments and Relics Commission. Okay. So this is how um, this particular museum okay. was established. Fantastic. Um, what are some of the plans that you have for the museum? I know you said that with more sponsorship, um, you'll be able to kind of recondition, but... What is the, the ultimate goal of the facility? What are you trying to accomplish? Uh, the ultimate goal, as, I'm, uh, as I told you, um, a museum, this particular place, is a place that we are here to preserve, we are here to document, all the historical facts of the real of this country and the idea of of documenting or preserving it is for the purpose of education and enjoyment so we we, we are actually here to preserve it as long as we can so that the children and children yet, yet on board will be able to see this thing because even as i'm talking i never i i never had the opportunity to to onboard um, the girls at that time so but because these things are here because I'm going to sleep, Davis gave us the opportunity. I'm here now talking like I was there. That's why you have the opportunity to ask me the question if I was there at that time. It's because they have this whole idea of seeing how to establish a museum. So now you see many children are coming here. They have the opportunity now to come and see a, a, a train or a locomotive for the very first time. They, they took pictures with them and they put it on Facebook and they informed their parents about it. Yeah. So um, as you are saying, we have a lot of plan. Our main focus here is to see how best we can be able to market this place as much as possible. And that is why we are very much happy about your coming. Because my responsibility as outreach officer is to see how best the least person in this country will be able to know the values, the importance of this particular place. Okay. And, and we, we, we do not only want to see people coming here, but we also want to establish some educational facts. We want to see many children coming here, especially for the education sector. So you've heard it from Mr. Abdul Karim, who's the educational outreach officer here at the Sierra Leone Railway Museum. The Railway Museum is here for your enjoyment and for education. This is something that's being preserved so that generations of Sierra Leoneans yet unborn will have an opportunity to know where we've come from with regards to transport and railway. And maybe sometime in the future, we will be able to join other countries who are now enjoying trains as a form of transport and um, enter into the new millennium. So this is the Vicky Ramo Show, and we will be right back.